I recently built a brand new home office, and the best part of any office is of course the desk setup. And for my new setup, I've assembled a lineup of 10 desk gadgets that I use every day to help me stay creative and productive. Oh, and I should mention, there are actually two desk setups in this office. One is a Windows PC and the other is a Mac. And I found some really useful devices that work on both operating systems. But not all of them are perfect. In fact, some of these gadgets I regret buying. So let's get into it. Here are the 10 desk gadgets that I use every day in my office. Let's start with my main desk setup. This is where I write scripts, edit videos, and do just about everything else during the workday. And yes, this monitor layout is ridiculous. I'm running a 42 inch LG OLED as my main monitor, and I've added two 24 inch vertical monitors for multitasking purposes. And now we move down to the desk where we have my peripherals. Up first is the glorious GMMK numpad. This is one of those desk gadgets that some people will love and others will despise. And I am somewhere in the middle. It's a numpad, but it's ridiculously overbuilt. It's made out of solid aluminum and it has a knob and a slider. And of course, you can reprogram every key on this numpad to be a macro or a shortcut. But here's the catch. The software this numpad comes with doesn't allow you to reprogram the knob or slider. They can really only control the volume on your computer. Also, there's just something about the glorious logo and the whole PC Master Race vibe that feels really out of date in 2024, so I went ahead and placed this lovely sticker on mine. Much better. Up next is my daily driver keyboard. This is the Keychron Q2 Max, and it's one of the best pre-built mechanical keyboards I've tested. This thing just feels premium. It has an aluminum case, and it weighs three and a half pounds, so it's not sliding anywhere. It also has a very satisfying volume knob on the top right corner. And as for the typing experience, well, I went with the Gateron Banana Switches, and I love how they sound. If you're looking for a high-end mechanical keyboard, the Keychron Q2 Max is a very solid option. Option. Rounding out my peripherals, we have my current mouse. The undisputed champ of productivity mice, yes, this is the Logitech MX Master 3S. There are two reasons why I can't seem to get rid of this mouse. First, the horizontal scroll wheel. This is just so useful if you edit videos or audio files, anything where you need to move left to right. And second, the programmable thumb buttons. I always map one of these buttons on my mice to be my delete key, which allows me to delete video clips or whatever I'm working on without ever having to take my hand off the mouse. Up next is the newest desk gadget in my setup. This is the Beacon Mix, and I'm using it to control the volume of everything I do at my desk. With the knobs, I can control the volume of individual apps or groups of apps, and pressing the knob down will mute the sound instantly. But I was interested in it because it's one of the few physical volume controllers on the market that runs on both PC and Mac. And while I do like the design and the core functionality of the Beacon Mix, it does come with some very strange drawbacks. For example, you can't program any of these knobs to control your master volume. That's just not possible. To do that, you have to open the software, and on my Mac, that software stays open 24-7 in my dock, which isn't a big deal, but it is annoying. So while this device works for controlling volume and it looks nice on my desk, it's far from perfect. The final desk gadget at my main setup may look like a desk clock, but it's actually quite a bit more powerful. This is the book's Palma, and it's an Android tablet with an e-ink display. I recently made a video about this device where I used it to create a sort of modern typewriter, and at my desk, I'm using it as the most powerful desk clock of all time. When the Palma is not in use, it displays the time and date. And because the screen is e-ink and not LCD, this does not drain the battery. In fact, you can leave this clock on your desk for months on end, and the battery will not die. But because this device runs Android, it can also be my controller for Spotify, or I can pull up a to-do list and just leave the screen on all day. Because again, this is e-ink and I don't have to worry about battery life. Now let's move over to my second setup. This is the audio desk. This is where I record voiceovers for YouTube and occasionally attempt to record some music. But it turns out being an audio engineer is way harder than I thought, which is why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is the world's largest online learning community that is focused on creative work. That means there are classes that can teach you how to draw and animate characters, or how to create 3D models, or one of my current favorites, how to record and mix music. And as someone who loves creative projects, Skillshare has been great for giving me the motivation and tools to pick up new skills and get better at my craft. For example, I recently moved my office downstairs and I get way less sunlight down here, which makes filming videos more difficult. Thankfully, Skillshare has a learning pathway all about digital cameras, and in this class, I'm learning how to dial in the settings on my own camera so I can capture better video in areas with less natural light. And if you're interested in picking up new creative skills of your own, you should head over to Skillshare using my link in the description below. The first 500 people to use my link will get a free month trial of Skillshare. All right, back to the tour. The monitor and speakers I'm using at my audio desk were repurposed from my old office. This is the Samsung CRG9 49-inch ultrawide, and I know most people associate this type of curved monitor with gaming, but I think this display is great for working on audio projects because my editing timeline has so much horizontal space. Up first at the audio desk, we have the Megalodon 3-knob macro pad V2. This is a follow-up to one of the first devices I ever covered on this channel, and if you haven't seen one before, this is essentially a 16 button macro pad. Every key can be programmed with a shortcut or macro. And this specific model is known for having three rotary encoder knobs, which can be very useful depending on what you do at your desk. Personally, I use these knobs for video and audio editing. If I need to adjust the brightness of a video clip, instead of using my mouse and wiggling a slider on screen, I will use the knob to adjust the brightness, which gives me more precision and control. And unlike the original, this second version of the three knob macro pad is now fully wireless with a rechargeable battery. The keyboard that I'm using at my audio desk is the Nufi Air 96. This is a low profile mechanical keyboard with a 96% layout, which basically means it has a numpad. As with the previous Nufi keyboards that I've tested, the build quality on the Air 96 feels premium. The key switches feel great to type on, but it's actually a very quiet keyboard. If you're looking for a mechanical keyboard that is safe to use during your Zoom calls, the Air 96 is a great option. As for my mouse at the audio desk, well, there's not much to say here. This is yet another MX Master 3, this time in black. I'm curious if anyone out there has found a productivity mouse that can compete with the MX Master series. If you do, let me know in the comments. Directly above the keyboard is a piece of music gear called the Roland Aria J6, also known as the Song Creation Machine. This is a super compact synthesizer that can fit on any desk, but what I love about this device is that you can tell it what genre of music you are trying to create, and it will automatically load up chords and notes that fit the genre, which means you can come up with song ideas in just a few minutes. One minute later. I know this is a very niche piece of gear, but if you're casually interested in music creation like me, the J6 is a fun piece of gear to keep on the desk. Up next is the trusty PC panel mini, which I've been using for years. Much like the Beacon Mix at my other desk, this is a volume mixer, and each knob controls the volume of a specific app on my computer. The only reason why the PC panel isn't at my main desk is because it only runs on PC. The microphone I'm using at my audio desk is the Shure MV7 which I have mounted on a blue compass arm. This mic was on my list of biggest disappointments of 2023 because the sound quality wasn't great when I used this microphone with a USB cable. But now I've swapped to a full XLR setup and I've dialed in the settings to the point where the MV7 is usable, but I will probably be replacing this with a better microphone in the future. And finally, we have my audio interface for this desk setup, which is the Behringer Zen, Zenic, Xenix, something like that. This is a four channel audio mixer with a USB output. That means I can plug my YouTube mic into this mixer as well as a guitar and the microphone next to my drum kit at the same time. And as far as interfaces go, this is a pretty affordable device. But if you're just recording your voice at your desk, there is no need for a mixer like this. This device is really for multi-channel recording, which I do on occasion in my office. 
And there you have it. These are the desk gadgets and accessories that I use every day in my office. And as this little tour comes to a close, I've realized something. Essentially, all of these gadgets do the same thing. They add physical controls for tasks that I'd typically do on my computer with a mouse and keyboard. There is something about adding physical controls to my setup that just clicks with my brain and it makes working at my desk more enjoyable. And so I may be addicted to adding additional knobs to my desk setup, but at least I'm getting my work done. <laughs>